What's going on guys? So you'll see behind me that we have an 05 Silverado 2500 HD on the lift. Now, the reason that I'm doing this one, we've already done a Silverado on the channel, but it was a 1500. The Silverado 2500 HDs are a little bit different when it comes to the cross members and everything that rot out. So what we're doing now is we're actually gonna pull the bed off of this thing and I'm gonna break every bolt doing it. So I'm not gonna show you guys that. I'll pull the bolts off when I bring it back in to pull the bed off of it, we'll, uh, we'll get a shot of that and then I'll run through the entire vehicle and tell you exactly what's wrong with it, what we're gonna be replacing, and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll get an idea of what it's like to do this stuff on a 2500 HD versus a 1500. So here's a first in my career. Every bed bolt, every single one of them came out. Go figure. Even the two in the back, which are way up in there. Hold on, I'll show you. There's, there's one right there. And then one right there. All eight of them. How all eight bolts came out is beyond me, but I'm not going to jinx it. So the only thing you have left to do with these is just disconnect the, uh, the taillight wiring from this junction box that's right here. And now we can actually flip this thing around and uh, lift the bed off of it. And just like that, the bed is off. Of course, it's easy peasy when you have uh, one of those guys, but you could do this with a couple of buddies. The bed's not that heavy. I mean, you guys saw me moving it around by hand, so probably weighs four or 500 pounds. You can pick it up with two or three friends, you know, one guy on each side and one guy just to kind of hold on to it and then have somebody else drive the truck out from under it. But here's the main difference between the 2500 and the 3500, or I'm sorry, the 2500 and the 1500s. Well, first of all, we got all kinds of rusty stuff but 1500 does have this brace also has this brace however it does not have this big x brace now in the 1500s it literally just has another metal tube just like that shock tube right here that runs across and then it's got a very small cross member that runs across the back here and then the spare tire carrier sits on there now the 2500 heavy duties, they put this much bigger brace in here to stiffen the rear of the frame, which increases the towing capacity. So we have to replace this because it is just literally flaking apart completely. Um, there's a spot, yeah, right over there. That happened, the shock mount broke off of it. They tacked it back on just for the time being. And we got a few other odds and ends to do, but what's nice about this one is this is not actually welded in. It is riveted in, which means that all we have to do is cut one, two, three, four, five, six. There's probably 12 rivets on this thing that we got to cut out. And then we can slice it right down the middle and take the whole thing out, slide the new one in, weld it in, and it'll be good to go. Now, there are some other issues with the frame that we're going to be addressing. We're going to be replacing this cross member as well, just to be safe. This cross member here looks totally fine, so we're not going to touch that one. We got to drop the fuel tank out. Um, there are some areas of the frame that we are going to want to address that look as though they might be getting, you know, a little bit thin. So we're going to hit that with the needle scaler and worst comes to worst, if we've got some really thin sections of the frame right in this area, we'll clean all this up and we'll just lay some plates right across here just to kind of stiffen things up a little bit. But I think we have enough metal in these areas. I literally think it's just a lot of scale, but... The needle scaler will tell us if we start punching holes through this, we'll know exactly what we need to do. So the next step in this process is we're going to unhook all of the fuel system stuff, get all the fuel lines unhooked and get the fuel tank dropped out of it. Luckily, this thing's only got less than a quarter of a tank in it, so it shouldn't be too, too bad. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. 
All right, so now that we got the fuel tank out, which we struggled a little bit with because these bolts always rot in here, so we just cut into that and we're replacing that anyway, but we're good. We got the fuel tank out. We're taking a look at this center cross member. It's not terrible. It does have a little bit of a hole in it, but we can treat that. The majority of the structure is still there. So we're good there. We'll just clean that up, paint it, and uh, everything will be golden here. And then what we're going to do next is we've already got this X cut in half. Now we have to take each one of these rivets out and we're gonna make it easy and use a torch. And we're just literally gonna burn all of these rivets out. Now the kit comes with all new bolts for this stuff, so don't worry about getting rid of the rivets. But we basically got two, four, six, eight, I think there's 10 of them total, but eight that I can see, and then we can slide this cross member out. We unbolted the shock and everything is good. So I'm gonna get the torch set up and we're gonna get those cut out. So as you saw, cutting out rusty rivets is not the funnest thing in the world, and then beating them out with an air hammer. But we got them all out, got all this disconnected, but I wanted to show you guys this piece. This is the piece from Safety Cap, and it actually takes the place of all that garbage that came out, and super thick, won't go anywhere, and it is a complete bolt-in setup. So we're going to be bolting all of this together so that we don't have to worry about welding it. And doing anything like that because it was riveted from the factory we bolt it in and then we can change it up if we need to change it up we can replace it if we need to replace it but hopefully we won't have to do that so now we just got to clean the frame up we'll pull this back out just wanted to make sure everything fit we'll pull it back out we'll paint and treat all the insides of the frame we knocked all the rust off of the frame as you can see thickness wise frame's still good there's a couple spots that i'm a little concerned about up front but we'll check those as we move forward to the other cross member but for right now, this is where we're at. All right, guys, so I'm gonna apologize in advance if you might be getting a little something in this area in the video. We sacrificed another GoPro lens to the gods of Sparks. But, so here we go. We got the entire rear half of the frame completely descaled, as you can see by all the crap on the ground. Used our 
handy dandy needle scaler. We got it all descaled and we shot some Rust Oleum, uh, not self etching primer. It's a rust preventer or a rust converter, rather. Let me see if I can find a can of it. Here it is Rust Reformer, it's called. It's a rust converting primer. So basically what it does is it converts all rust to a, a primed surface that's ready for, you know, regular primer and paint. And it stops the rust pretty much dead in its tracks. So what'll be nice is once we get this thing all done, we'll shoot a coat of regular paint on it. And then the customer can load it up with some fluid film or something like that. And it'll stop any further rust. Now we do have a couple of thin areas in the frame. One of which being right here which is where these brackets for the for the um, rear spring mounts actually go. These brackets are always toast, they never last, and this area also gets very, very soft. But if you look back here, we have plenty of thickness here, we have plenty of thickness here. We also have a steel plate that covers this and a steel plate that goes on the bottom that the hitch actually sandwiches. So metal-wise, we're good. When it comes to this area here, this area here, these intersections always rot out, which is not a huge deal because these frames are actually two pieces. They're connected right here. So there's a spot where it's welded right here, it's welded here, welded here. There's a gusset right there, and then this is just the intersection. So the outer section of the frame is actually still totally fine. We hit that with the needle scaler, still got its full thickness, so we're good there. Same goes for this side, not as bad as the other side, but shot some rust reformer on that so we then came over to our new cross member and we shot some self etching primer on this because it's bare metal self etch prime the whole outside of it the whole inside of it got that all ready to go so then what we're going to do is we're probably going to shoot a coat of black paint over each one of the sides so that when we put this thing in between the frame rails it will be completely protected and we won't have to worry about having any rust issues or anything like that. We'll get it in there, we'll bolt it all in. Once it's all bolted down and we have enough strength here, we're gonna go ahead and knock out this center cross member. One of the things we wanna make sure that we do is get this rear cross member in because I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but these frame rails move quite a bit. Now we do have it on jack stands at the front so the rear is free hanging, there's no weight on it. Once we get this rear cross member in and bolted down, we'll be able to accurately put in that center cross member right there, which was rotted. So we'll get all that stuff done. I'm going to let that paint dry, probably go get something to eat, and then I'll set you guys back up when we put all this stuff in. Alrighty, so we got the holes cut and we got our old cross member out of here. Got it all cut up and taken out. And you just cut these up into pieces and then I use the plasma cutter to just kind of cut around in the circle. We got the new rear cross member painted. We're just waiting for that to dry because what we're going to do is we're going to pull this back, drop it down and slide it right in between the frame rails and then bolt everything together. Then we'll go ahead and put the front cross member in and weld all that stuff up and then we can paint it, put this whole truck back together. So we're getting close guys. All right guys, so now that's painted all in place. All the bolts are in, you bolt your spring mounts back up two bolts there, two bolts on top, a bolt there, a bolt there, and we're good. So now we moved on to the front cross member. This is it all mocked up. See, it's nice because it comes with these plates that are weld in on both sides, sandwiches the frame, keeps it super strong in that area. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and weld this in. Once we get this welded in, we can shoot a coat of primer, coat of paint on it, and then we can put the fuel tank back in, and get the bed back on it, put the bumper and everything back on, and I'm gonna change batteries on the camera and probably time-lapse the rest of this thing going back together.
there you have it. The bed is back on. It's all bolted down. Everything's tightened up. Frame underneath is looking way better than it did when it came in here. So far, so good. We got the bumper back where it's supposed to be. Put the tailgate back on. A few other little odds and ends we took care of. We had to re ended up replacing one of the gas tank straps. I don't know if you guys saw that in the time lapse, but these things have a lot of uh, issue with the fuel tank straps actually going bad. So I keep them in stock just because. If I don't keep them in stock, I need them. If I keep them in stock, I hardly ever use them. But in most cases, the rear most fuel tank strap will rot out on these things. But I hope you guys enjoyed that one because we've never done a 2500 HD on the channel. And now that we've done it, you can see it's not difficult, but it is more time consuming than the 1500s because to get that massive X brace out and to get the new one in, you have to take off the bumper, the trailer hitch. I mean, everything has to come off. Whereas with the 1500s, you don't need to do that. The bumper doesn't have to come off. The hitch doesn't have to come off. You just have two cylindrical tubes that run all the way through. So you don't have to worry about it. But with this one, with that big X brace, just a big pain in the butt. You need a torch to cut the rivets out. If you try to drill them, you'll be there for days. Um, but just, a, you know, some differences. You guys saw that in the video. So like I said, hope you enjoyed this one. Guys, go check out autorust.com. I know I always put their links in the description when I do these, but go check them out because they have so much going on and so many different things for your vehicle. If you're curious on what vehicles they do cover, head over to the website, check them out. We are an authorized installer for them, so if you find something and you need something done, feel free to hit me up, give me a call, shoot me an email, DM me on Instagram. You know the drill. You guys all know how to get a hold of me. So, um... Yeah, I think that's going to conclude it. Saturday night, it's getting late. I'm getting tired. And this one's done. We're going to send it tomorrow morning. All right, guys. Have a great night.